all of you watching online, we're so glad you tuned in today. I know this is on time, on time, everybody shout on time, on time word that God has got just for you because he knows where you are. He sees you exactly where you are. How awesome is that? Who wouldn't serve a God like that, right? Amen. Amen. Um, Y'all may be seated for a moment. You know, I have been doing a series this whole month, and what a timely series, isn't it, called Fear Less, Fear Less. And as children of God, as his sons, as his daughters, it is so vital that we remember whose we are, who we belong to, because we can get caught up in the noise. Has anybody been caught up in the noise of fear? The very atmosphere has been just tainted with fear. And so what an on-time word God knew. But we were already like the atmosphere. They were talking about COVID. They were talking about this. People are generally shaking right now. But I'm telling you, even doing this this sermon and this series, it has been so eye-opening to me to remind myself and to remind you that God is still in control. He's still on the throne. He was on the throne 10 days ago. He was on the throne when they invaded Ukraine. And all of us who are worried, y'all got to remember, you can open the Bible in any place, and you will see that there's always been evil and good. There's always been enemies. There's always been friends. There's always been war and rumor of war, right? This is not something that is new. But if we are not grounded and we do not know what his word says, because he cannot lie, he cannot lie. If you don't know what his word says, you'll get caught up in the words they say. You'll get caught up in their report instead of the report of the Lord. So with all of that and all of the fear that is in the atmosphere, today you're going to walk out of here. And I, I want you to take your phones out right now, put them on mute, limit your moving around because you need this word. Tell your neighbor, you better be still. You better be still, amen. You don't want pastor throwing a mic at you. You better be still. But I want you to get your phone out right now, your mobile device, and share this word because somebody needs this. Somebody needs this. How do you combat darkness? With light. And today we're going to shine a light on some things. Matthew 24, 6 in the, the Good News translation says this. You are going to hear the noise. Everybody say noise. Of battles. Has anybody heard that this week? Of battles, right? Of battles. Close by, close by, and the news of battle. Everybody say news, bad news, bad news of battles far away. Haven't we heard that this week? Haven't we heard that? Ukraine is not close by, but you might have somebody you're fighting with in your family. It's still a battle, isn't it? Amen? So the noise of battles close by and the news of battles far away. But here's your word today. Here's your word. Do not be troubled. I want you to turn to your neighbor, neighbor right now, and I want you to point your finger at them and say, do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. Do not fear. Tell your other neighbor, do not fear. Such things must happen but they do not mean that the end has come, okay? So everybody chill. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to get into the Word right now? Amen, amen. I'm so glad we serve a God who is still in control, and he saw the end before the beginning. Even when he knit you in your mama's belly, he said, I want that person, that daughter, that son born right now because it is so important they're here for such a time as this. That's you. That's why you're being fought so hard. You've been wondering why you've been fought so hard in your mind or with whatever stronghold or generational curse and bondages. You've been wondering why the enemy has targeted you because you were born for a purpose for such a time as this. You're here for a reason. It doesn't matter what you come from. You're here for a reason in this season. Amen? Amen. I have been feeling in the spirit since the beginning of this year Uh, that this is going to be a a great, amazing year that we see the display of a mighty move of God, of miracles and the outpouring of his spirit and his power manifested in the earth and in us. And at the same time, everybody knows, what did we talk about at the beginning? A battle. Do you think the enemy is going to lay down? No. He is calling all troops to come to the front because he is going to try and stop what God has ordained. But guess what? Say, you can't stop this. 
You cannot stop this. Why? Because God is a God who has already conquered him, and he knows his time is short. So he's going to kick and scream, and if he can take any of y'all's eyes off of the Redeemer, your Father, the God who is in control of all things, Yahweh, then he's got you because he can control you and keep you walking in fear. Amen. Y'all ready to be loose today? I said, are you ready to be loose today? Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you because I've been waking up during the night and I'll be praying and I have just felt something stirring in my spirit. So when you're nudged awake at night, take that time right then and say, God, what do you want me to pray for? And there's sometimes it'll be you. Your face comes to my mind, and I intercede for you. But there's other times that I don't even know what it is. I just feel that urgency to pray. And see, you're that important that he wakes you up in the middle of the night and says, Daughter, I need you to cry out right now. I know you don't know what it's about, but just cry out. Cry out. Intercede. Stand in the gap. Amen? So we always start like this. I want you to do this. You can do it seated. Place your hand on your head. And we're going to pray, God, renew my mind with your truth. Say it. Renew my mind with your truth. Your word says, cast all my cares upon you. Right now, I throw all of my fear away. Right now, I throw all of my worry away, all of my anxiety. I cast it upon you, and I trade, and I receive your peace. Your peace, God. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in your word. You are my Lord and my God, for you are in control of all things. Everybody shout, all things. Amen. Turn to your neighbor one more time and tell him, say, throw it down. Turn to your other neighbor that you didn't choose first and tell him, I choose peace. I choose to walk in peace. Amen. You can live your whole life afraid. You can live your whole life fearful of something bad happening. And it's all in what you choose to focus on. It's all in what you choose to believe. You can believe the lies of the enemy, the noise of the news, or you can believe God's word, God's word. Luke 21 and 28 in the New Living Translation says this, So when all these things, everybody shout it again, I'm going to work you, all these things all these things happen. Stand up. Shout, stand up. Look up. There you go. There's your key right there. Say it again. Say it's time to stand up and look up. Stand up and look up. For your salvation is near. What a powerful word. Those four things right there. Stand up. Look up. Stand up. Look up. How many of you, the first thing you do in the morning is you take your phone out, your device out, and you look where? Down. You're looking down. It's time to stop looking down. Y'all got me? You got, you're looking at the wrong thing, right? Right? So one more time. How are you going to defeat it? Stand up. Look up. That's actually a little teaser because starting in March, I'm doing a series on baby fight back. Okay, not baby got back, baby fight back, okay? Amen, amen. So the whole month of March, I'm going to be infusing you with the word of God that is going to equip you for the battle for such a time as this, right? You don't want to walk out into the battlefield with no armor. You left it at home in the closet. Many of you have been doing that every single day. So get ready. Next, I'm going to say it like T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready, right? Because next month, next Sunday, I'm starting that series on Baby Fight Back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, okay. So today is the last Sunday of the series, Fearless. And God just gave me a, a verse that has been playing over and over in my mind all week. And it is in Philippians 4 and 6. And it is this. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for some things. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Y'all shout that out for me real quick. Be anxious for nothing. So there's a, a story of a husband and a wife, and they live in this house, and this wife has been terrified, terrified for all of these years 
that there's going to be a robber break in and steal their stuff and do all kind of horrible things because of a story she read years ago. So it's followed her, and she's been living under this for so many years. So every night before she'd go to bed, she'd hear a noise. They live in an old house, so everybody knows old houses are full of what? Weird noises, right? Right? It plays with your imagination. Uh, you'll think it's Freddy Krueger, or you'll think it's that big bad serial killer that they found you and pointed you out, okay? So your mind goes into all these places, and she is telling her husband he got up like 20 times in the night. Every night it's a routine. Baby, baby, did you hear that? And Hey, hey, something's downstairs. Go check it. Go check it, honey. Go check it. Well, he'd come back up and he'd say, honey, coast is clear. Ain't nothing going on. Ain't nothing going on. Go back to sleep. Here we go again. Baby, baby, did you hear that? There's a noise downstairs. Please go check it. I can't go back to sleep. I'm afraid. It's that robber, the robber. He's here. He's come to get our stuff. He's going to kill me. He's going to torture us. All of these things that she's built in her imagination, it hasn't even happened. Are y'all following me? Has not even happened. What did I teach you about your imagination? Infinity and beyond, baby. It is absolutely able with your mind alone, with no evidence, to build a case about something, right? To manufacture it here, and it ain't even out there. So finally, one night, the husband, the wife hears another, something falls, and she goes, babe, babe. And he goes, oh, Lord, here we go again. Okay, honey, I'll go downstairs and check it. He goes downstairs. Guess what? Ten years, ten years. Here's a robber. Here's the thing that she dreaded, the thing that she was so afraid of. And the husband says, Excuse me, before you get ready to go about your business and, you know, take everything you want to take from us, I would like you to come upstairs and meet my wife. She's been waiting to meet you for 10 years. Some of you, some of you, <laughs> some of you have been living in fear of something terrible happening to you, and it hasn't even occurred, but you're just that silly. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, Lord, the thing I dreaded has come upon me. Well, baby, you've been dreading for 10 years, and it's just one time it's happening. So, yeah, be prepared. You know, get your peace out. You know, like Medea says, I got my peace that passes understanding. It's got some bullets in it. Anyway, or get a bat or karate or whatever you want to do. But anyway, get prepared. But at the same time, don't live in fear. Don't live in fear. Why? Because it steals the peace of God. It steals the peace of God from you. Amen? So Webster describes anxious, and the definition of it is characterized. What are we talking about again? Be anxious for nothing. Anxious for nothing. Anxious, the definition is characterized by extreme. Shout extreme. Say it again extreme uneasiness of mind or brooding fear. That means fear that just hovers over you like the dark cloud all the time. Brooding fear about something or a feeling of dread. There's a difference between worrying, concern. You know, it starts with concern. This thought comes to your head and go, mm, I'm concerned about that. Um, or worrying. Worrying is the next thing. And worrying and being anxious are two totally different things. But anxiety always begins with worry. With worry. Worry gives way to anxiety or unease. This is definition in Webster. Allowing one's mind to dwell on. Everybody say live there. Live there. Dwell on difficulty or troubles. Live there. Just like the woman. Dwelling there. Living there. Every night living in fear. Dwelling on difficulty and trouble. Worry is temporary, and it resides where? In your mind. Anxiety is longstanding. That means it stays there a long time. It's when worry has now kicked over into another gear, and it's always there, and you've you got that tightness on your chest. Can anybody relate? That feeling of panic right beneath the surface. It allows one's mind to dwell on difficulty or trouble. Worry is temporary, resides in the mind. Anxiety is longstanding, and it affects the body because it moves out of here. Now you're affected physically. The body and the mind. Some of you have been wondering why you're sick. 
You've got migraines. You've got ulcers in your stomach, and you don't understand. You have allowed the thief of anxiety to come in and fear and panic to come in and to start affecting you physically. So anxiety is so bold, it will crawl into bed beside you. It will talk to you all night. It will be there standing by your bed first thing in the morning when you open your eyes. It will go get in the car and take a ride with you to work. It will catch a ride back if it didn't steal your peace. It will steal it on the way home. That is what anxiety does. And remember, it starts with what? Worry, worry, worry. So it's so interesting. The words I just read in Philippians, Paul wrote that to the Philippian church. You know where he was? In a jail cell, awaiting his execution. His execution. And he is saying this. What did he say again? Be anxious for nothing. Didn't he have a reason to be anxious? I think I would be a little anxious knowing they're going to behead me the next day or, or execute me or torture me or, or whatever they were going to do to end my life. So he's saying be anxious for nothing for nothing. God does not want you to be anxious about anything. Nada. A zip, a zero. Amen? Nothing. Nothing. So why would you trust God? Here we go. Why would you trust God to forgive you of your sins and to get you into heaven to save you when you can't even trust him about your job, about your kids? Come on, I'm coming with you. The economy, the war, the rumors. Of what, why would you trust him about something so important as your salvation, but you don't trust him about him getting you a job or sending you the person you're supposed to be with and marry, right? You feel a little foolish right now, do you? That's the God we serve. So you can say, oh, I trust him for the big things, but, you know, the small things, I think I need to take care of those. That's a lie. There's a scripture in the Bible I quote a lot. He said, tell me every single detail of your life. He wants to know everything. He knows it, but it's about communication. It's about relationship. Matthew 6, 28 through 30 in the message translation says this. So y'all write this down. Matthew 6, 28 through 30. Y'all are going to want to keep these. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever got taller? Because see, we, we get caught up in worrying about what other people think. That's little, isn't it? We get caught up in worrying about how we look, our gray roots. Come on now. We get caught up in the silliest things about getting our nails done, making sure we impress somebody about the latest fashion. All of that stuff is ridiculously silly. We get caught up in it, though, in those small little things. And this is what I love in the message, the way they said, has anyone by fussing in front of a mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? Do you know anybody that's done that by standing in the mirror and saying, I, I wish I was taller? I wish I was thinner. Has it ever changed anything, right? They're focused on the wrong thing. The Bible says, do you think it makes that much difference? Not at all. Instead of looking at the fashions, this is the Bible, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. Y'all, I walked outside. You see these little daffodils? So let me finish this and look at the wildflowers. They never primp. They didn't get up this morning and say, I need to fix my hair because she's coming out and going to see me. She's going to walk by me. They never primp. They never shop for new clothes. But have you ever seen color and design the way God can do it? Quite like it. The 10 best dressed men and women, I'm still reading from the message, in the country. They look shabby alongside of what God has created. If God gives such attention, come on now, to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you and take pride in you and do his best for you? Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I thought about that because Matthew 6 teaches us that even nature, even nature's not worrying. Even nature trusts God. I didn't go out and water these daffodils that grew wild by my house. I didn't even plant them. I didn't tell the sun to sun, shine on them, make sure they look good, make sure they bloom. I didn't do anything. God sent the rain. 
God sent the sun. God allowed some bird to plant this. He allowed the bees to pollinate. I did nothing. And you've been worried about what? You know I could stop right there, but I need you to hear me today. You've been worried about what? Fill in that blank. Don't you feel silly? Remember, you didn't do a thing. He did it all. And you think that you have to do something to make his will happen? Mm -mm, baby. Just walk. Walk on. Walk. 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 Look up. Stand up. I said stand up and look up. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Worrying is ridiculous. It's irrational. Being afraid is irrational for a child of God. Matthew 6, the rest of that, I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. Matthew 6, 31 through 32 also says this. This is the rest of that. So don't worry about having enough food. You know, they're talking about what? The prices of food going up. The prices of gas going up. This, that, and this, that. Fear, 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 fear. And you got caught up in it. When you don't understand, your provider has never been the government. Your provider is never about a green dollar bill or a Benjamin. Your provider is not the person that pays your light bill. Your provider is God and God alone. He sends the rain. He sends the money. He sends the finances. He takes care of you. You didn't even think about it this morning when you took a breath in and you exhaled out. You didn't do anything but breathe. God gave you that breath. I said, God gave you that breath, and you're worried, and you're worried. He says, so don't worry at all about having enough food and clothing. Why be like the heathen, the ones that are not my children? Why be like them? They're worried. They have a reason to worry. They don't have me as their God, as their father, as their protector, their, their provider. Why worry like the heathen? For they take pride in all these things, the fashion, the clothes. You know, they want to front, act like they got it all going on. When in reality, they don't. They're the ones that cry their self at sleep tonight because they have to impress somebody. They have to fool somebody and lie to them. So why take pride in all these things? They are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly Father already knows. What did I say? He already knows perfectly well that you need them. And he will, shout he will. He will give them to you if, now shout if. Here's the key. Here's the key. If, if you give him first place in your life. Say it again. If, if you give him first place in your life. So if you give him first place in your life, you don't have to concern yourself with this. And you live as he wants you to. God is a relational God and he honors his covenant. So how do you put him first place? How do you put him first place? When you put him first place in your life, it's honoring him as God of your life lord of your life yahweh amen he is your god he said i'll take care of all your needs according to whose riches your riches no his riches isn't that good he ain't got to worry about what you got coming in he ain't got to worry about what you did this week he said i will provide all everybody shout it again all your needs according to his riches his riches and glory thank you father so when you honor him like y'all showed up today, you put him first today. When you pay your tithe, baby, it ain't about just getting money. You have to understand, I've done this since I was a child. The reason I do that without even thinking is because I need God's blessing in my life. I need him to honor and to bless and to help me get through anything. And when I give to him first fruits, first fruits, and I honor him, immediately that is saying, God, you will supply every one of my needs. You are my God, and to you I look up and I stand in confidence in your word and in your promise. Amen? Amen. Yeah, give him a praise right now. Hallelujah. And you will, you will, you will be tested. Your heart will be tested because what does it say? Clifford quoted it. Where your heart is, where your heart is, 
That's where your treasure is going to be. Amen? So a lot of you wonder why your money's always tested. Because you're being checked, baby. You're being checked. That's why. Your heart will be tested. You will have many opportunities to put other things, everything, everything, especially your money ahead of him because you're putting your confidence in the wrong thing. You're looking down instead of looking up. You're looking down instead of looking up. When God, you put him first, it's acknowledging his relationship with you as your father, as your Lord, your redeemer, your everything, your everything. The God that gives the sun that brings the rain. The God that covers you in a storm. Amen? Amen, amen. Luke 12, 25. I'm giving you a lot of scripture today. If I go fast, just write down the reference. Go back and read it because this is going to get you through when you start having that anxiety or that fear come upon you. Luke 12, 25 through 26 and then 30 through 31. And this is in the CEV, the Contemporary English Version. Can worry make you live longer? Amen. Not at all. If you don't have power over small things, why worry about everything else? Don't y'all feel silly? Y'all feel silly. You didn't change nothing by worrying this week, did you? Verse 30, only people who do not know God are always worrying about such things. Your father knows what you need, verse 31, but put God's work forward first and these things will be yours as well big and small amen when you worry you're acting like an orphan you're acting like you don't have a father who's going to take care of all your needs and I love it I thought about this today I thought about David Houston his relationship with his daddy Arvin and I thought you know what I bet David Houston didn't get up this morning Worrying about what he was going to eat for breakfast or having clothes to wear or having a roof over his head. You know why? Because he trusts the relationship of his provider, his daddy. Don't you feel silly? You've been trusting in what? You've been trusting in what? Look up. Stand up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 in the Amplified Version says this. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Tell your neighbors, don't worry about a thing. Tell your other neighbors, snap it again, don't worry about a thing. But in everything, say everything, everything, every circumstance and every situation, by prayer, by how? Prayer. What is prayer? Just talking to God, just talking to him. And petition with thanksgiving. That means present your need to God. Petition with what? With praise, thankfulness, praise, thankfulness. Amen. Continue to make your specific request known to God. And the peace of God. Don't you want that? Do you want the peace that comes in God? The peace that you put in? Your confidence in God and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding of what my eyes see, what my ears hear. That peace, that peace that transcends all understanding and stands guard over your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus is yours. See, when you put your confidence in him, you've got his presence And it is guarding your mind. It is standing there like a soldier. It's guarding your mind because God has got every single need taken care of. He's already provided it for you. Tell your neighbor, worry is worthless. Worry is worthless. It can't change the past. It cannot control the outcome of the future. But it can ruin your day and your night, can't it? Amen? Amen. When you're anxious about something, it is proof that you have not given it and surrendered it to God. Mmm, I heard y'all. Mmm. It hurt, didn't I step on your toe? I'm not going to apologize. means you didn't give it to God. Whether that's your child, whether it's your dad, whether it's whatever it is. You put God first. You talk to him about what you're concerned about because that's relationship. You can talk to your girlfriend or your boyfriend, your best friend, your buddy, your coworker, whatever. But have you talked to God about it? 
See, if you haven't talked to him about it, you haven't given it to him. You're looking to someone else to fix it. And baby, you can't even fix it. Amen. In a sense, you are playing God when you worry. Why? Because if you don't give it to God, that means you can figure it out better than him. That's what your, your actions are proving that. So, if you believe that it all depends on you to fix that, have you fixed any of it? But you laid awake worrying about it, didn't you? And maybe it's something you caused, you know, the ripple effect. Y'all know what I mean? Maybe it's something you did and now there's just more repercussions that happen because of something you said or something you did. Just let it play out, but look up, stand up. Don't look back. Look where? Up and stand up. Amen. Hold your shoulders back in confidence. Get up. Get up out of despair. Get up out of depression. It doesn't matter how hard you try, tr trouble is going to keep coming, and with it is going to bring worry, concern, and if you keep it there and you let it sit on that back burner of your mind, it's going to turn into anxiety. It's going to turn into anxiety. No matter how many hours you lie awake at night worrying over whatever that was that you worried over this week or the last month or last year, you still cannot control the outcome. Tell your neighbor, pray. Don't panic. Tell your other neighbor, you can worry or you can worship. Don't let fear rob you of the gift God has given you in his peace that passes every thought you have. Paul finishes this letter, and I'm getting close to closing. He finishes this letter to the Philippian church while he's in prison by giving them the tools. Everybody want tools to conquer your worry and your anxiety? You know I'm going to give you tools, right? Amen. This is what Paul said. Here's his, his advice to the Philippian church, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version, and it's Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Finally, shout finally. That means, okay, here's the end of this, and hear me and hear me well. Finally, believers, whatever is true, say it, true. So not the lies that you're reading, not the lies and the hearsay and the fear-mongling that's going on, right? Whatever is true, where is truth found in the Word of God? It's not in man, it's in the word of God. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace. Mm, thank you, Lord, for these lovely wildflowers. Amen. Whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there is any excellence, if there is anything, shout it again, anything, anything worthy of praise, think how often, what does it say next? Continually. Does it say sometimes? What does it say? Continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. That means plant them. Drill them down deep in your heart so they don't move. Implant them in your heart the things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in the news in social media at the job where is it heard and seen in me in me practice these things in daily life and the god who is the source of peace and well-being will be with you do this say he's with me He's with me. Tell your neighbors, I don't know why I'm fearing. He's with me. He's been with me. So here's my thing I want to say with you, uh, leave it with you, and that is refuse to worry. That means catch it. Catch it. Stop it. Stop it at the door. Let your request be made known unto God by prayer. Give it to God. Lay it down. When you pray about it, leave it there. Let him handle it. Quit getting in the way. Stop. Don't get in the way. Let your request be made known unto God by prayer. Give it to God. Express thanksgiving. It has never, ever failed that when you start lifting up a praise and you start talking about how great and mighty God is, 
on the way here, I did that. And I was just saying, God, you are so awesome. You are so holy. You are magnificent. You are my provider. You are my strength. When you begin to do that, it shifts the atmosphere here, and then it shifts the atmosphere all around you. And fear cannot penetrate that. So it's shifting it here. The peace of God will go to work for you, producing supernatural tranquility that don't make a lick of sense and rest for your soul. This is the last scripture I'll read. Psalms 4 and 8 in the Amplified Version. In peace and with a tranquil heart. For all of you who've had trouble sleeping. In peace and with a tranquil heart heart i will both lie down and sleep for you alone you alone you alone oh lord make me dwell in safety and confident trust isn't that sweet that's your promise that's your promise i lay down and i put my mind on you god for you alone not the economy not the gas prices doesn't matter who's in control of Russia or wherever. What matters is who do you put your confidence and trust in, the one that never changes, the one that is unmovable, unshakable by any of the things I named and didn't name. You're God. You're God. You're God. I want you to just say this right now. Close your eyes as I, as I lead those that are here that have been dealing with and battling with that anxiety and that worry and that fear. If I'm talking to you today and you're tuned in even by live stream, by Facebook or by our app and website, I want you to know that God is whispering to you, child, give it to me. Just release it. Give it to me. Let it go. Everything you've been concerned over, everything you've been worried about, let it go. And I want you just right now to whisper to the deepest part of you, everybody in here and those of you watching, you can even type it out. In the comments below, I choose peace. Say that right now to yourself. I choose peace. It's a choice. I choose peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're in this place and you're lost, if you're away from God, if you're watching, and you have been away from God, and you feel like you've squandered it, you've blown it, you've made such a mess out of your life, I want you right now to just lift your hand up and say, God, I'm coming to you, and I'm surrendering all of me, not part of me, but every single part of my life. I'm giving it to you. I'm laying it at the foot of the cross right now. I give you all my worries. Thank you. I give you all my fear. I give you all the anxiety, God. I've made a mess of things because I've gotten in your way. But, Father, right now, help me. Help me to put my heart, my mind, my eyes on you. Not on what I've done or the messes I've made, but, God, let me look to you. My healer, my redeemer, you are a merciful God. Right now, everybody stand to your feet. Those of you who are watching, those of you who are here, I want to encourage you to be back here next Sunday. As we talk about the new series, fight back, fight back, amen.